Hi, this tutorial is in support of my new blog series, Introduction to SQL for Excel Users. At any point in this video, if you like what you see, or even if you're not familiar with the blog series, just click up here and it'll take you to my website so you can check that series out. I'm going to go ahead and make an assumption that you are familiar with the blog series and you're here because you would like to use Microsoft Azure as your SQL Server environment. So what this tutorial will show you is how to go get a free account on Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud, and then set up what's known as the Data Science Virtual Machine, or the Data Science VM. The Data Science VM is wicked cool. It's got like all the toys, everything that you'd want on it, Python and R and SQL Server and SSMS and Jupyter Notebooks and oh, Apache Drill, all kinds of good stuff. What it means is it's very super easy for you to have a SQL Server environment so that you can learn SQL, practice it, in the Azure environment for free, and then when you're done, clean it all up. I'll also show you how to shut the VM down. So let's say at the end of the day, you have went through one of the blog posts and you're ready to call it, call it done. And what you do is you just shut the, the VM down. And then that way, everything's saved for you. It's nice and ready to go. So that when you come back again, you just start the VM back up and then you're off and running. Okay, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay. So this process that I'm going to show you, I'll be doing on Windows. However, conceptually, it's exactly the same if you're using Mac OS X. Unfortunately, if you're using KDE or GNOME or some sort of windowing system on Linux, I'm not familiar with that. So unfortunately, this isn't going to be much help for you. My belief is that most people are either going to be on Windows or on Mac OS X. So this will work for both of those two operating systems. Okay, so the first step is conceptually the same. No matter if you're using a MacBook or you're using a Windows machine, you fire up your browser and you head over to Azure, right? Azure is Microsoft's cloud, if you're not familiar. And you can see this nice gentleman here and he's looking off into the stars and thinking about all the big things and all that jazz. But what you're interested in is this right here. You're interested in the free account. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Now, the free account is great you can use this to do a lot of exploration, a lot of stuff in Azure, and not actually pay anything for it if you're careful. And I'm gonna be emphasizing this a lot, okay? It is easy to spend a lot of money in Azure or in Google Cloud or in AWS if you're not careful. So I'm gonna emphasize this a lot, and I'm gonna say this more than once. I am not responsible if you get a huge Azure bill. It's not, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how to avoid that. And if you don't follow my advice, I cannot be held accountable for what happens to your credit card. Okay, so the free account gives you a lot of cool stuff, right? You get $200 of credit to explore Azure for 30 days. You get 12 months of free popular services. So you can do all kinds of interesting things, right? So you can get the AI services. But this is the stuff that we really are interested in, right? Which is the virtual machines. Because what's going to be easiest for this tutorial is using the Azure Data Science VM, which is a virtual machine. It's a, a virtual computer that's already set up in the Azure environment, and it's got all the software you want on it. It's got SQL Server, it's got SSMS, it's got Python, it's got R, it's got Power BI, it's got all kinds of stuff already on it. You don't have to worry about installing it. It's already there, it's pre-configured. You can get a Linux version. I'm gonna use the Windows version, of course, because that's just the way I roll. So this is cool, right? You get a lot of free stuff and this will give you more than enough Azure compute and storage and processing power to you, to fulfill all of your needs for the tutorial. Everything you'll need, you could easily get it done in a free subscription. So I'm not gonna walk through it of course because I already have an Azure subscription, but you click on start free and you just go through and you fill out all this other kind of stuff, right? And then you go through that process. Okay. Once you're done with that and you log into Azure, you're going to land here in the home screen. Okay. So this is the Azure home screen. And you can click the navigation here and you can go to the home if you ever want to. And I can't go through all of Azure, not surprisingly there's a ton of stuff that you can do in Azure. You can run an entire enterprise essentially on Azure if you would like. So it's got lots of bells and whistles, but I'm just gonna give you the nitty gritty, the easy peasy way to get started. So all we need is an Azure Data Science Virtual Machine, a Windows version of that. So 
it's easy enough to do. You just go ahead and come up here and you create, you, excuse me, you come up here to the search bar. That's what it's called, the search bar. And you just type in data science VM, right? And you can see, ah, here we go, right? Stuff's come up. Here is the data science virtual machine. Windows and Ubuntu, which is Linux, if you're not familiar. Mm, we're going to do Windows because that's just the way I roll. So you click on that. And it takes you to the data science virtual machine, Windows 2019. And you can look at this and you can see, oh, look at all the cool stuff that it's got. Look at that. It's got Jupyter Notebooks and well, it's got Julia. I didn't know that. Python, R, Node.js, Power BI. I mean, it's got all the things. <laughs> it's got all the things. All we need for our purposes, though, is SQL Server and SSMS, which comes installed on this VM automatically, so we don't have to do that. So it's pretty fun and cool. So you want to click Create, or you can click Start with a Preset Configuration. So we're going to go ahead and start with a preset configuration here, okay? And notice that this is it said, said production. We don't want that. We want dev test. We don't need a production machine for what we're doing. Okay, and general purpose is fine because we don't need memory optimized and we don't need compute optimized because we're going to be running a very small database and we're going to be running very simple queries. So we don't need a big beefy VM. We just need a really simple one to get our work done. Okay, so then you go ahead and click continue to create VM. Remember, you want the data science virtual machine. You want the Windows edition. You want dev test and you want general purpose, the D series. So go ahead and continue to create the VM. Okay, now your subscription will show up here. This is my subscription. Um, I got an interesting subscription. It's called a Visual Studio Ultimate. It gives me some free credits and some cool stuff. Okay, uh, I'm not, I can't drain Azure, but I do need to talk about a couple things just to get you familiar with it. In Azure, you have these things called resource groups. Resource groups are essentially just containers, right? You can stick your virtual machines in them, all this different kinds of stuff, and they're just nice little buckets for you to manipulate. And I'll show you later that once you're done with all of this, what you'll do is you'll just delete this resource group and it'll take care of all the things that you've allocated so that you can be sure that Azure's not gonna charge you for anything. So we're gonna wanna create a new resource group. So let's call this intro to SQL for Excel users. Okay, intro to SQL for Excel users. That's gonna be the resource group. We click create new, we gave it a name, we click okay. So what's gonna happen is behind the scenes, Azure's gonna create this container called intro to SQL for Excel users. And we're gonna stick our uh, data science VM in there. We're gonna stick any networking stuff in there. We're gonna stick any um, storage in there. Now that all sounds more complicated than it, than it it is because this will all be done for you automatically, but we're gonna put it in this container, in this bucket. So we need to give the virtual machine name a name. What, the virtual machine name, excuse me. <laughs> so we'll call this uh, intro, we'll just call it the same thing, why not? Call the name of the machine. So this is literally the name of the computer because a virtual machine is a virtual computer and we're giving it a name. We're gonna call it Intro to SQL for Excel users. And you can pick a region that's close to you. Uh, I live in Montana, so US West is close enough for me, but you can do a drop down and you can pick stuff that's closer to you. So like for example, if you're in different parts of the world, just pick a um, Azure data center that's relatively close to you just for latency reasons, if nothing else. Okay. You don't need any infrastructure redundancy because we're just playing around with it. And you definitely want this image. That's the Data Science Virtual Machine Windows Server 2019. Uh, we don't want a spot instance. Um, this will just make it easier for you for reasons I'll go into. Now, let's take a look at the size. Now, not surprisingly, the bigger the VM, the more expensive it is. I was playing around earlier with this size, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit slow. So actually what I would suggest picking is this one right here the D2S underscore V3 with two virtual CPUs and eight gigs of RAM. That'll help out a little bit. Now notice if you ran this VM in a paid account and you ran it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it would cost you about $70 a month. So what I'll show you and I'll keep emphasizing is 
shut it down. Shut the VM down every time you're done with it. And that way you'll extend out not only your free trial, but if you ever decide to start paying for it for whatever reason, you're not actually going to pay $70 a month for it. You'll only pay for what you actually use. Okay, so we want this one right here. The general purpose is D2S underscore V3. Select that bad boy. Okay, now this is super important. Okay, this, this right here, the administrator account, this is the name and password that you're going to use to log into the virtual machine. So this is something that you want to remember, okay? I am gonna go ahead and just leave it as Azure user. You can change it to whatever you want. If your name's Bob, you could call it Bob if you wanted to. But what's really important is the password. You wanna make sure that you remember the password because recovering these things is extremely difficult. And usually the easiest way to do it if you forget the password is to just delete the VM and repeat this process again to set it up. So just write the password down. Uh, maybe save it in a notepad file or text edit if you're on a Mac, whatever, right? So pick a password. I'm gonna just go ahead and type one in. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, of course. Oop, fat fingered the keyboard. Okay, let's try this again. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna type in very slowly now. Whoa, seriously? Okay. <laughs> okay, we're, yay. <laughs> okay, so uh, don't worry about this and you don't, I'm assuming you don't have a Windows Server's license to so say no. Next, we're just gonna allocate disks. Now, generally speaking, you just go ahead and leave the premium SSD on here, or, you know, standard, standard SSD is probably okay. Um, all this does is just makes things cheaper for you. Okay, we don't need to add any additional disks, and the reason for this is simple, because um, when you allocate a, a VM in Azure, the VM comes with a disk drive, a C drive, um, a home drive, and it has the operating system on it, it has SQL Server on it, it has Python on it, it has R on it, and we're just gonna use that, that's all we need. So we don't need to add any disks, which is nice. So we just leave this by default. You can switch it to standard SSD or you can keep it on premium if you'd like. Um, I get paranoid about cloud stuff, to be honest with you, so I typically go with standard because I don't really need the premium. All right, be sure to leave this as the default. You don't wanna mess with the encryption. And um, let's go ahead and click networking. Don't need to fool with anything here. Just leave it all with the defaults, okay? Don't mess with any of this. Management. One thing I do wanna, the one thing I do wanna emphasize here, oh, see that's my email address, I'll have to block that out in Camtasia, um, is the auto shutdown. Keep this on, okay? You can switch the time, change it, but keep it on because what this does is it protects you. Essentially it says, look, if your VM is running, uh, it will automatically shut down in case you forget. And that's just a good thing, right? For what we're doing in this tutorial, this is great. It's kind of like a backup. I will emphasize over and over again that you want to shut the VM down every time you're done with it and start it up every time you want to practice. But this is kind of like a, a backup safeguard mechanism for you in case you forget to do that. Okay. Advanced. We don't really have anything that we need here to worry about. We just leave, we just leave it all the same. We don't need any tags. So we just go to next, review and create. And it comes in and it says, okay, based on your current um, settings, this would cost you, if you were paying for it, 9.6 cents per hour. So about $6 an hour or so. Okay. And we can scroll down we see everything's good. We see validation passed. So we can just click create. Now what's gonna happen is, you see this handy dandy thing right here, it's telling you that it's deployed underway, right? So Azure's doing a bunch of magic for you behind the scenes to get this VM up and running. So that's gonna take a bit of time. So let me flip over to another instance of Chrome here so I can talk about something that's specific to Mac OS X. Okay, so we need to remote into the VM, right? So for example, I live in Montana, 
And the, da- the Azure Data Center, I think US West 2 is in Eastern Washington State in the US. So it's nowhere near near me. Right? I can't actually touch the thing. So I need some way to remotely connect to that VM, that remote computer, and work with it. And the easiest way to do that is using Microsoft Remote Desktop. Remote Desktop comes installed by default on Windows. It doesn't come installed by default on Mac, not surprisingly, but you can download it from the App Store. And that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to download this and install it on your Macintosh. And this is the only thing that's a little that's different, essentially, from what I'm showing on the Windows machine, is that you have to download this program, install it. Because what will happen is we will, we will use what is known as an, an RDP file. And when you double-click an RDP file, it's usually associated with this program, whether you're on Windows or whether you're on a Macintosh. It'll fire up remote, uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop, and that is the program you use to communicate with the VM um, from your local laptop or your local desktop machine. So you'll need to download that, and you'll be off and running. Okay, so let's check on the progress of the VM. So deployment is still underway. So what I will do is pause the recording because there's no point in just watching this chug away. And we'll resume once everything is up and ready. Alrighty then. So the deployment is complete. So the VM is actually up and running in the Azure Data Center that I chose. And how I can find it is I can just go back to home up here. And I can go to this drop down here and select my virtual machines. And there it is, okay? My intro to SQL Server for Excel users virtual machine is running. And it's in the resource group that I selected and it's in the data center and there's a subscription, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if I click on this, it gives me the details. And I can see here, I have some commands that I can do to the VM. It's currently running, so I can't start it. I can ask the VM to restart or I can stop it, we'll be using this a lot, and eventually when I'm done with it, I will delete it. I won't delete the, the VM directly, I will delete the resource group, this thing here, because the resource group contains the VM, so it'll delete the VM and everything else all at the same time. Now how we connect to it is by collect, keep clicking here on the connect button. And it gives us some, some options. By far the easiest is this one right here, RDP, that downloads an RDP file. And you can see here, blah, 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 this is what we want. We want, to call it, we want to click here on the download RDP file so we can download it. And this will happen on Macintosh as well. It'll come in the download folder and you can click on it. And it's going to say, oh, okay, well, I don't really know where this thing came from. Is it okay? And, but yeah, we know where it came from Azure, so we're cool with it. Okay, now typically what's gonna happen is it's going to try and connect with your Microsoft account. Uh, I blurred mine out in the video. And what you want to do is you actually want to log in once again with this user that you created. For, in my case, I just used the default, which was Azure user. And this is where I need to type in that password. It's helpful to click Remember Me so you don't have to do this every single time. You click OK. Now, you'll get this kind of pop-up. It'll say, ooh, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on with the certificate, but we know this is good because it's our Azure VM, so we just say, don't ask me again. Click yes. And it's gonna take a second here, and we're logging into the VM. Right, this is the virtual machine that's sitting in the US West 2 Azure Data Center. And you can see here is the IP address. Now, by the time you watch this video, this VM won't exist anymore because I would have, I'm going to delete it and show you how to do that. So don't worry, I'm not violating any security. And when you first time you log into a VM, it might be a little bit slow. That's just because, you know, it's got to get everything set up. Okay. And look at all this goodness. Look at all this goodness. Visual Studio Code, Jupyter, uh, Apache Drill, um, Power BI. You got R down here. You got SSMS. You got all kinds of all kinds of good stuff. Just go ahead and click no over here. And, you know, the, the VM's just firing up and it's running some scripts and all that jazz.
So it's just getting everything set up for the first time, right? This is like when you buy a brand new computer and you fire it up for the first time, it's gotta go through a bunch of setup stuff, same idea. Okay, cool, right? We've got almost everything we need. So go ahead and click on SSMS here, right down here. It's already pre-installed for us, lovely. And as usual, it's gonna take a second to fire up. Um, SQL Server is installed on this. It's running in the background already. It's already configured. You don't need to worry about that. Don't need to worry about anything. And this is gonna take a second to fire up here. Now, the thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse database and restore it onto this VM because by default, uh, this VM only comes with the NYC Taxi database, which is a, um, a database that Microsoft uses as an example for a lot of machine learning and AI type of demos in Azure. Uh, we don't need to worry about Teams, so we'll close that. And SQL Server Management Studio is firing up. This is going to be quite easy. Um, let's go ahead and tax the machine. While this is running, let's go ahead and click on this, Microsoft Edge Beta. Okay, Chrome is not installed by default on the VM. Shocker, right? So you can just use this because we just, we're not gonna be spending a lot of time in the browser, so we can just go ahead and use the Edge Beta. It's totally fine. But that will also take a second to fire up once again because this VM is brand new. When you shut this VM down and restart it later, it'll be faster each time once all this is done. Welcome to the new edge. Okay, cool. It is a nice logo though. It's got that kind of like ocean wave thing going on and the color scheme is pretty nice as well. And just go ahead and click get started and then just quickly close that down. And what we want to do is type in AdventureWorks. And you can pick any of these. I'll just pick the DW 2017 and takes you to Bing, and you go right here, click on this, and you get the download page for the AdventureWorks databases. Now what we want, we don't want any of these. We make sure there's DW. You want AdventureWorks DW 2017. You don't want these, you want the Data Warehouse download. You want this bad boy right here, okay? This is the one you want. AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2017.back. This is a database backup file. So, Easiest way to do this is you right click on it and save link as, and I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it in this temp folder that's created automatically right here. Just click open and save. And we downloaded AdventureWorks, awesome. And SQL Server Management Studio is still taking its own sweet time firing up here. Okay, here we go. The spinny, the spinny blue wheel of death. Now notice this is all really set up for you. You don't need, don't need to worry about anything. Just click connect. And we're here in SSMS. SSMS is um, the graphical tool, the UI for accessing SQL Server. The analogy I use when I describe SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, is that it's kind of like what the web browser is to a web server. I mean, you could connect from the command line to a web server if you wanted to. It's not a very useful experience. You use a web browser. The web browser provides you a graphical user interface on top of a web server, whether that's a Microsoft web server, or a CNN web server, you know, whatever web server that you're using, Apple's web server, who knows. So it's like a browser, right? It allows you to browse the database. So you can open the databases up and you can see here that the NYC taxi database is pre-installed. But what we don't have is the AdventureWorks database. So we can use SSMS to not only browse through the databases, browse through SQL Server, We'll also use it to run our queries, our SQL queries. So to get the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse database in place, just go up to the database node here, right click on it, and click Restore Database. 
Now, these dialogues are ancient, by the way, and they are not very intuitive. Microsoft has never prioritized making them snazzy or revamping them. So I apologize for that, but it's relatively simple to work through. We want to restore our database from a device, specifically the hard drive on the VM, right? We just downloaded that .bak file, the backup file. We want to actually access that. So you click the device radio button here, and then you click this ellipsis button, and that allows you to navigate. And the backup media type that we want is a file, and we need to add that file. So we click the add button. And it brings up a dialog. And remember, I stored it in that temp file down here, TMP. So we want this one right here. Right? We want to click on this AdventureWorks DW2017.back and click OK. Sweet. And then click OK again. And everything should work just fine. And we just click OK. And it'll take a second and it'll restore the database for us. Easy peasy. Uh, we're restoring the database 100%. Yay, restored successfully. Just click OK. Awesome. Now we have the database that we'll use through the tutorial. And you can explore this database. You can crack it open here. And we're going to ignore everything for the most part in this tutorial series except for the tables. That's all we were going to work with. So we open this up. And we can see all the tables in the database. And in particular, the one we've been using so far in this series and the be the Primarily the focus of what we're doing throughout the tutorial is this table right here, the fact call center table. Now, how we open up a query is pretty easy in SSMS. There's this button up here called new query. So you click on that and it's gonna pop open a new query window here in a second. And this is awesome. Now we can start writing our queries. If you've been following along on the tutorial, this will look familiar to you. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. It will become familiar as you go through the, the blog tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and write a very simple query here. Now notice this is what Microsoft calls IntelliSense. Uh, it's trying to help you out. It's going to say, oh, most likely, Dave, you're probably interested in the fact call center table, which I am. So if I just click tab, it auto completes the code for me, which is nice. And then I can just click execute. And there you have it. I've got myself my query. Awesome. All right, so cool. You now have your VM set up. And let's say you've been practicing your SQL, going through the blog series and everything's awesome and you're done for the day. Okay, what do I do? Um, you can save off your query files to the local machine, to the local VM. I don't recommend doing that. If you really want to, um, copy and paste them onto your actual laptop, whether that's your Windows laptop or your Mac laptop, and save them there instead of on the VM. So I'll just close this down. It'll say, hey, do you want to save it? And I'll say no, because I don't really want to do that. And I can just close this down. And I'll close this down just for to be nice. And I'll just click this right here, close. And it'll say, hey, you want to disconnect? And I'll say, okay, cool. And you'll notice that I'm back on my laptop here, and I'm in Azure, because I still have my browser open to the Azure website. If I click this overview here the, for the virtual machine, I can now stop it. Right? That's what I'm going to want to do. It's going to say, hey, do you want to reserve the public IP address? And typically, you don't. You do not want to reserve it. You don't really need to do that. You just click OK, and I'll show you why in a second. OK. So it's going to go ahead and stop the virtual machine. What this does is this stops the usage of resources in Azure, which means it stops your billing clock. You're still accumulating a little bit of billing right now because you are using some Azure storage to keep all this in place, even though you're not using it. But what's most expensive in Azure as is, is the same in Google Cloud as well as AWS, Amazon Web Services, is using compute and memory. Those are the two most expensive things, generally speaking. So in this case, you're incurring very, very little expense right now because you stopped the VM, okay? So you can go ahead and click on this. Uh, should be, or maybe we'll just refresh the page here. 
And, oh, it took me back to the resource group. Well, that's not good. So let's go back to home, virtual machines. Oh, okay, so it's in the status of deallocating. I was going to restart it, but it's not actually done um, with the process yet, which is why this button is not enabled. So let's say you've closed down for the day um, and you come back the next day and you're ready to actually do start all over again to practice. What you would do is you would log into Azure, you would arrive at your home screen here, and you'll notice when you arrive in the home screen now, you'll see that your virtual machine is now listed. So you just click on that and it'll take you to this page. Now, everything will have been deallocated, everything will have been wrapped up for the day from your previous session of stopping the VM, and this button will be enabled. You can actually click it. And you will click this button, and this will start your VM. Now, that will take a while. It doesn't happen automatically. It takes a little bit of time. And once again, once the VM is um, started, you just click Connect once again, and you select that RDP file. Now, you need, you'll need you need to do this every single time because we opted not to reserve the IP address, which means that every time you start the VM up again, it'll have a different IP address, which means you need to download another RDP file. And all you do is you just click it like we just saw, log in, fire up SSMS, and you're off and running. Okay, that's it for this. Okay, I almost forgot the most important part. So let's say you're done with the tutorial. You're at the very end. You don't need anything in Azure anymore for whatever reason. You can see here that I'm in the virtual machine and notice that I could start it again if I wanted to, but that's not what you're gonna to wanna to do in this case because you're totally done with this series. You don't need Azure anymore. So what you do is collect, or excuse me, click on the resource group. Click on the resource group and what you want to do is delete the resource group, okay? This will delete all of this jazz, right? The virtual machine, the networking, all the stuff, all at once, it'll make a it boom gone, including the resource group itself. So if you click on this, it's like, well, are you sure you want to do it? So you have to type the resource name in just to make sure it's what you want to do. And notice now the delete button is now highlighted. I can click delete and boom. Azure's telling you I'm deleting the resource group. Now this is deletes everything, right? This is like nuking it, gone. Okay, there you have it. That's everything you need to get started with a SQL Server in Azure for free. Okay, there you have it. Easy peasy. Everything that you need to be off and running with SQL Server in the Azure Cloud. Once again, if you liked what you saw and you're not familiar with the blog series, go ahead and click up here and it'll take you to my website and you can check it out. Until next time, I wish you good health and very happy data sleuthing.